Hi everybody, welcome to today's webinar. My name is McKay Allen. I'm the Director of Content and Communications at Log My Calls, and we're excited you're here today. And we're especially excited uh, to have with us today uh, Kevin Jordan um, of Redpoint Marketing Consultants, a member of the Duct Tape uh, Marketing System um, that's widely regarded as one of the most successful small business marketing systems ever. And so we're excited to have Kevin with us today. I joined him on a podcast a few weeks ago to talk a little bit about Log My Calls and call tracking. And he's going to explain to us today, the title of his presentation is Creating a Marketing Strategy for Your Business. And so we're excited Kevin has agreed to join us today. Um, first, just a couple of quick announcements. Uh, Log My Calls, just so you know, so you have some background, is a call tracking and call analytics solution. We can tell marketers which ads, campaigns, and keywords generate phone calls and which don't. It's a really great tool for small businesses if you're looking to determine which campaigns are generating actual measurable ROI versus those that aren't. And then also, um, we're, uh, we, we are the only call tracking solution that analyzes the content of phone calls and extracts data from those phone calls. And so it's a fantastic tool that a lot of marketers all over the place use uh, to track what's going on with their marketing efforts. Um, second question people, people frequently ask about Log My Calls, other than what do you guys do, is uh, why do you do these webinars? We do a couple webinars a week with marketing experts from a variety of different areas and fields and, and uh, disciplines of marketing. Um, and uh, we do this for two reasons. First, it's useful content marketing, right? It's, it's really informational content that helps you do your jobs more effectively. But then second, it's also really, really um, uh, important for us to get in front of people who are, are sophisticated marketers and, and business owners. And so this allows us a way to do that. It also um, allows us to meet great partners like Kevin. You'll notice tomorrow we have a webinar um, about the past, present, and future of link building um, with uh, Travis Bliffin, the CEO of Stellar SEO. Next week we have a webinar with Tim Ash, the CEO of Site Tuners. Uh, we're really excited for that webinar. And then we also have uh, webinars coming up where we're going to talk about conversation analytics. Uh, so it's anyway, it's it's awesome. We like webinars a lot. So. Thank you for attending ours. You'll notice that upcoming webinars as well as past webinars are recorded and held in our webinar library at logmycalls.com slash webinar. So with that, let's introduce Kevin Jordan. Uh, first of all, we encourage you to ask questions during today's webinar. Just type those into the little question bar. And now we'll introduce Kevin. As I said, um, he is uh, um, the uh, consultant at Redpoint Marketing Consultant. Um, he's based in Richmond, Virginia. And Redpoint is a member of Duct Tape Marketing System. It's a group of consultants that works with small businesses all over North America. Um, they're having their meeting in a couple of weeks here, and uh, he's, he's getting prepared to go to that. So he's worked with small businesses from a variety of different industries, help them market better, help them track their marketing more effectively. He's truly an expert here. So uh, Kevin, we're excited you've agreed to join us today. Thanks for taking the time. Uh, I'm going to make you controller of the screen so people can see what you want them to see. And uh, then after the presentation, we'll take questions for Kevin. So Kevin, thanks for joining us, sir. Thank you for having me on. And uh, let's make sure, can you see my screen OK right now? Yeah, it looks great. OK. Well, I'll go ahead and uh, start the slideshow here. All right, so my topic for the day, like McKay explained, is creating a marketing strategy for your business. And this is one of my favorite topics to speak about. And the reason I like talking about marketing strategy is because nobody else out there is really talking about it. Everybody loves talking about marketing tactics like uh, SEO and online marketing and uh, pay-per-click advertising, lead generation, uh, social media. Everybody loves to talk about social media. And all these things are great uh, and they're very necessary and so there's certainly a place for all these things. But none of those things are really going to work very well, if at all, if they're not backed up by a rock-solid marketing strategy. That part has to come first. And so that's one of the reasons I love talking about marketing strategy. The other part is that it's really a cornerstone of the uh, duct tape marketing system that McKay was just describing. And just so everyone's on the same page and you kind of understand where I'm coming from as a duct tape marketing consultant, before I get into the marketing strategy piece, I just want to spend a minute or two talking about what duct tape marketing actually is. 
So um, and some of you may be familiar with it, um, so this will be a, a review for you. But for those who aren't, uh, duct tape marketing was basically started by a guy named John Jantz in the early uh, 2000s. And at the time, John was working as a big business marketing consultant. But what he realized was that he really enjoyed working with small businesses a lot more than he enjoyed working with big businesses. The problem was that things that worked with big businesses when it came to marketing just were not going to work with a small business. Small business does not have the budget to go out and hire teams of researchers to build them a marketing plan. They don't have the budget to do image advertising where they're just blasting their logo out over the airwaves and uh, buying up all kinds of advertising and trying to build name recognition that way. They really need something that's going to be a lot more cost effective than that. And at the time, there really was no good solution to this problem. So what John decided to do was to take the concept of a, a business system introduced by the book E-Myth and apply that to small business marketing. And if you've never read the book E-Myth, I highly, highly recommend uh, getting that book. It's a real quick read. Um, it's probably one of the best books on entrepreneurship ever written, hands down. And the concept in that book is that the way to build a successful business in the long term uh, is not so much to do with the people in that business as it is to do with the systems in that business. And the book proposes that even if you never intend to franchise your business, and I would say that most of us probably don't, uh, if you build your business as if you do plan to franchise it and put those kinds of systems in the business, you'll end up in a very good place. So John took that concept of a, a business system and applied it to small business marketing. And he knew that the system that he was creating uh, had to do a couple of things. It had to work in a wide variety of different types of businesses and industries and sizes of business. It had to be something that could almost be installed in the business and once installed would sort of maintain itself without a lot of additional input from the business owner. And most importantly, it had to be something that would be simple, affordable, and practical. So simple, affordable, practical sounds kind of like duct tape, right? So that's where he got the name for his marketing system and for his company that he was starting. So he, he started using this marketing system and it really started taking off. Um, so around 2005 or 2006, he created a network of independent marketing consultants who uh, license his brand and his products and his services and are trained by him and his staff on how to use it in our businesses and how to um, help our clients with it. And that's basically what I am, is I am one of those independent marketing consultants who um, license the duct tape marketing brand almost like a franchise system for marketing consultants and I use it in my own business. Um, so you're actually uh, experiencing it a little bit today because um, doing things like producing educational content and teaching webinars is definitely a part of that system. And I also teach it to my clients. And the process that I teach to my clients is a seven step um, process that they use to create it in their business or create this duct tape marketing system. And the seven steps are what you see here right now. So the first step is basically what we're going to be talking about today, strategy before tactics and creating a marketing strategy. Once that's done, um, we create something called a marketing hourglass for the business, which is basically a sales funnel with a bottom half. That's kind of a way of turning every customer into a referral source for new customers. We publish educational content about the business, uh, the webinar series done by log by calls and it is an excellent example of something that might go into that step. We put that content online to create a total online presence for the business. We use the lead generation trio of advertising, public relations, and referrals um, to generate leads. And then we use a lead conversion system to uh, turn those leads into customers. And last but not least, we put it all together on a marketing calendar so that it can be maintained on an ongoing basis. So that's the entire duct tape marketing system. And like I said, we're just going to be dealing with that one um, small piece of it 
today, the first step, which I would say is probably the most important piece and off also the most often that, uh, skipped. Um, people love to jump right into tactics and they often just either give lip service to strategy or skip it entirely. So strategy before tactics. What, what are we talking about when we say strategy? There's really three things that go into creating your marketing strategy. And I'm going to talk about each one of these things and I'm going to give you action assignments that you can go and complete um, for each one of these steps. And I hope that some of you listening today will actually go out and do these things and walk away with a much better idea of what your marketing strategy might be as a result. So the first step is identify your ideal client. So what do we mean when we say ideal client? Well, in the world of duct tape marketing, the way that we define ideal client is somebody who is going to be highly profitable for your business and who also will refer new customers to you. Because theoretically, if everyone who came into your business, if every client or customer that you had was highly profitable and also refer a new business to you, uh, two things would happen. Number one, I'd be out of a job. And number two, you would be in a very good place because you really wouldn't have to do much marketing, um, if any marketing, and every, every uh, customer that you had would be doing your marketing for you. Now, obviously, in the real world, it doesn't work out quite like that, but we still want to try and get as many of these types of folks in your business as possible. And the first step to doing that is to figure out who exactly they are. And this is where your first assignment of the day um, comes in. So what I want you to do is to go into your bookkeeping system or to talk to your accountant and bring up a profit by customer summary report from the past year or past couple of years in your business, uh, whatever makes sense for you and you're going to determine who your most profitable customers have been during that time. Take all these people, put them on a spreadsheet, print it out if you want to do it that way, and go through that list and highlight or circle all the people on the list who you know have also referred new customers or clients to you. And then once you've gotten those people, you're going to create a separate list just of those people who are profitable and who you know have referred new business to you. Once you have this list, what you need to do is go through the list and start taking notes about all the things that these people have in common. You want to think about demographics like age, uh, gender, um, ethnicity, geographic location, income level, profession, if you're a business-to-business -business, uh, company, you'll think about things like uh, the size of the business, the age of the business, number of employees, annual revenue, industry, um, all those types of demographic characteristics. You'll also think about psychographics. So um, in the case of uh, individuals, it would be things like what um, organizations or clubs might they belong to, um, what do they do in their spare time, um, what uh, are their fears? What are their dreams? What keeps them up at night? Um, what problems do they have? And not just problems related to your particular product or service, but just problems in general um, in their lives. In the case of businesses, it would be you know, what types of problems does the business have? Um, what are they struggling with? Um, and all those kinds of things. And once you've got a, a decent number of notes, you're basically uh, going to type, type up your notes and create a detailed biographical sketch of this person or of this business, almost like um, you're writing a, an article about them to, to put in the paper. Uh, if you really want to get into it, you can uh, give them a picture, either using a picture of an actual employee or uh, just use a stock photo that you think represents this person. And you're going to use this document as a training tool for your employees, um, for your salespeople, and also for your strategic partners so that you can um, hand it out to people who are already referring business to you so that they have a really good idea of who it is that you want to work with. 
So that, that's step one is to um, create that list, create your uh, ideal client sketch or your, your uh, biographical uh, sketch of your ideal client. And once you've got that part done, the next step is to figure out why this person likes you. In other words, what is your core difference or, or unique selling proposition, if you want to call it that, that appeals to this particular ideal client? Now, there's, there's a couple ways you could do this. Um, number one is you could just kind of guess and come up with some things that you think might appeal to this person. The way that I do it, and the way that duct tape marketing um, advocates that you should do it, is to actually ask your customers what they think your unique selling proposition or core difference is. Because they're the ones that are doing business with you, right? So why guess at this when we can just ask our customers? And the questions you want to ask them are what you see right here. So your, your second assignment um, that I'm giving you today is to take seven to ten of your um, customers that you uh, made a list of in step one, those people who um, you know refer new business to you and they're highly profitable, you know, take the best seven to ten of those folks and call them up on the telephone and ask them these questions. You're going to ask them um, what made you decide to hire us, uh, what makes us different. You're going to ask them to think of at least one thing that you do differently than your competitors or other companies that claim to do what you do. You're going to ask them one thing that you could do better. As long as you've got them on the phone, you might as well take the opportunity to improve your service. Uh, you're going to ask them if they refer you to other people, which they should say yes, since they're coming from that list of people that you think refer you. And if, when they say yes, you want to ask them what they say when they refer you. Think about that. These people are already referring you to other uh, customers or other uh, people. When they refer you, they're describing you in such a way that makes those people want to do business with you. Do you think that maybe that's something you want to be saying in your marketing? So when, when you create your marketing content and decide you know, what message you want to communicate, why try and come up with it yourself when your customers can do it for you? And that's why you want to ask them that question. And last but not least, um, you're going to ask them what they would search for on Google if they were looking for your type of business. And that will basically give you a list of keywords that you can use in, in, um, on your website and when you do your search engine optimization. So uh, in order to kind of teach you how to do this exercise and show you how valuable it can be, um, McKay has graciously uh, volunteered to do this with me. And I've asked McKay to think of a local business that he likes to refer to other people. And I'm going to pretend that that business has hired me um, as a consultant to help them with their marketing. And this is something that I do for my clients. I do these um, interviews for them. Um, so we'll pretend that his, uh, his business has hired me and I'm calling him up on the phone to do one of these surveys with him. Uh, so McKay, are, are you ready? I'm here. I'm ready. All right. So why don't you start by telling us just the name of the business uh, that you have in mind. Um, let's go with uh, a Mexican restaurant I frequent. Will that work? No, that's perfect. Okay. So, so this restaurant, I, I, I like it. It's called Don Pedro's. It's good stuff. Okay. Good Ex Mexican food. Excellent. So uh, I'm gonna, if, if, let's say Don Pedro's had hired me to help them out with their marketing. So I, I would call up McKay. And I'd say something like, uh, you know, McKay, uh, my name is Kevin Jordan. Um, I'm calling on behalf of Don Pedro's restaurant. They have recently hired me to help them out. Uh, to improve their customer service and their marketing. And as part of that process, we're interviewing some of their best customers about the experience they've had uh, at Don Pedro's. Um, the results of the interview are anonymous. It only takes about 10 minutes of your time. And if you'd be willing to help us out, uh, Don Pedro's is going to send you a, a gift certificate for uh, $25 to use at their restaurant. Is that something you'd be willing to help me with today? Absolutely. 
Okay, so the first question is, how did you first find out about Don Pedro's? Um, I think it was, um, that's a really good question. I think we were actually, when we moved to the area, we were actually just Googling for Mexican restaurants, and it had the most and, and best reviews of places we could find. Okay, um, sounds good. Uh, so other than the, the ratings and reviews, was there any other reason that you decided to go uh, try it out? Uh, not really. Um, it was just it's, it seemed the pricing was reasonable and uh, it was it's close to where I live, so works. Okay. Is there anything that Don Pedro's does uh, a little differently than other Mexican restaurants that you've eaten at? Um, it's just uh, it's just really everything I've tried is good, and they bring you tons of chips and salsa, which I like. Okay. Um, now I, I know a lot of different re Mexican restaurants uh, you know offer free chips and salsa. Is is there anything that you can think of specifically about Don Pedro's that really makes them stand out in your mind? Uh, yeah, when, whenever we go, um, we. You will, I'll tell you two things actually. They always offer. There's always coupons that they always they offer frequently. So it's it's nice. You get fifty percent off a meal. Or and then the we've never had a bad thing there. As I said, it's good food. Okay. And what's your favorite uh, dish there at Don Pedro's? Um, probably the pollo asada is super good. It's like a plate with chicken, and it's okay. Good. Okay. Can you think of anything that uh, Don Pedro's could do better um, to improve their service for you? Yeah, so the only complaint I have is sometimes the service is slow. Like you could be sitting there for quite some time before someone comes up and takes your order. Um, or if you send the waitress or waiter away initially, you know, saying you need a minute or two, that turns into 15 minutes pretty quickly. Um, so I'd say just more attentive service is probably the best thing. Okay. And... Uh, do you refer them to other people? Yeah, yeah. Whenever we go out with people, we tell them, you know, hey, let's go to Don Pedro's, or if people are asking about a good Mexican restaurant, we, we do. We refer people to there a lot. And uh, how do you describe them when you refer them to other people? Just say it's good food. Um, and, uh, like, it's, I mean, the main thing is we've never had a bad thing there, and that's what we t typically tell people, um, is that you, you, there's not a bad thing on the menu that we've had. Okay, and last question, um, if you were to, uh, if Don Pedro's, heaven forbid, were to go out of business and you had to go on Google and search for uh, a, uh, another replacement for them, what would you search for on Google? Um, probably just Mexican restaurants in St. George, Utah, which is where we are. Okay, excellent. Well, thank you very much for your time today, McKay, and uh, we'll get that uh, gift certificate out to you in the mail. Sounds great. Okay, so that's that is pretty much exactly how the phone calls usually go when I do these surveys. And um, I want you to notice a couple of things about what happened. The first one is that um, I had to ask some follow-up questions to McKay to really get the information that I was looking for. You know, for example, initially he uh, when he asked us what uh, was so great about the restaurant. Uh, or what they did differently. He mentioned uh, chips and salsa. Well, that's that's not really different. I mean, I don't know about you, but just about every Mexican restaurant I've been to offers free chips and salsa. So that that really wasn't good enough for me. And that actually is exactly what happens during these interviews. Almost always, the first thing that someone says is not really the good stuff. They'll say something like the company has good customer service or their prices are good and that, that is not good enough. Um, you need to dig deeper than that. And that's why you need to do these interviews in person on the phone and not via email or uh, via a direct mail or anything like that. You have to have either you or a third party do them on the phone so you can ask those follow-up questions. Um, the second thing is that we really got some good quality information that if we were Don Pedro's restaurant, we could really take and use in our marketing. Um, things like how he found out about the restaurant, the ratings and reviews on Google. Um, we now know how important that is. We 
uh, found out about the coupons that we offer, so maybe we could do some more with those. And this was only from one interview. It, once you start doing six or seven or, or eight of these interviews, what's going to happen is you're going to start hearing the same thing over and over again. Now, people will even use the exact same words to describe uh, the business that they're talking about. Uh, for example, when I did these for a local um, insurance agent, almost every single client that I talked to said that the agent was really good about responding promptly to emails and phone calls and several of them specifically mentioned that as a difference versus the last insurance agent that they had had. And this actually wasn't something that the uh, insurance agent was communicating in his marketing. Um, so, you know, his, in his customer's mind, that was one of the main reasons that they worked with him, but that wasn't something that he was saying um, in his marketing messaging. And a lot of times, uh, what happens is, is that what the uh, business thinks is their unique selling proposition might not actually be what their customers believe is, is the most important core difference about the business. And that's why you um, really need to do this exercise and why it's such a valuable part of creating your marketing strategy. Now the last piece is to put the two things that we've done so far together to create your brand. And so your brand, of course, involves things like your logo and your tagline and your visual elements, um, the colors, and all those types of things. But at the heart of it all, what your brand is, is what do you stand for? What is the one thing about your business that you want people to take away and remember that distinguishes you from everybody else who claims to do what you do? For example, in the case of myself and duct tape marketing, it's simple, affordable, practical, small business marketing. And everything about the brand, from the name of the company to the logo and, and everything else, supports that statement. Simple, affordable, practical, small business marketing. So you just need to determine what is that one thing for your business that you want to communicate and then everything about your brand needs to support and emphasize that point. Just to give you a quick example of how that works in actual business, um, I'll go to a quick example from a recent client that I worked with and then we can uh, maybe take a few questions. So. Um, this is a company that I actually am still working with. I started working with about six months ago. It's a local real estate investor from the Richmond, Virginia area. This company is RVA Property Solutions. And when he first came to me, he really had no way of distinguishing himself from his competitors. And uh, in case you aren't familiar with uh, real estate investing, it's basically uh, people who go around buying houses for cash um, there's the uh, Home Investors brand, the We Buy Ugly Houses people. Um, so there's some, some big name uh, companies out there and some big name franchises that do this uh, type of thing. And he was trying to compete against them. And the only way he could really compete was to offer higher prices when he bought um, people's houses. And of course, nobody wants to be competing on price. Um, that's you know how you end up going... Uh, being the first one to go out of business. So um, I took him through the entire process that I just described to you and what came out through that process was two things. Number one, when someone is in a position where they need to sell their home for cash, it's not a high point in their life. Usually there is some sort of underlying problem, whether it's facing foreclosure or um, having lost a loved one that left them a property that's fallen into disrepair or, or something like that. There's some sort of underlying problem that is really causing them a lot of stress. And number two is that a lot of these properties might not be in the best neighborhoods um, of the city. So all these companies that are going around buying houses for cash really aren't doing anything to address those two problems. They're just, you know, they buy the house and then you know, shake hands and go on their merry way. So what we decided was to position my client as the, the local hometown real estate investor who not only bought houses but also invested in communities. In fact, that's his new tagline, is buying homes, investing in communities. And not just investing in communities, but helping people solve 
their underlying problems that caused them to be in this situation. Um, so the first thing he did was put together sort of a, a network of strategic partners that could address some of the common problems that his customers had. So people like financial advisors and attorneys and uh, estate planners and uh, some auction, auction companies, moving companies, um, so that he could kind of step in and offer a complete solution to his clients' problems. And then the second thing he did was uh, start offering or start making a $500 donation to a local nonprofit every time he bought a house. And he would allow his uh, clients, the, the people he was buying a home from, who would allow them to choose the nonprofit that was active in their community, and the donation would be made in their name. So not only is this person having all of their problems addressed, but they're going to have the opportunity to give back to their community. Uh, we basically rebranded his entire company, built it around this concept, and uh, we just launched his website uh, two weeks ago, as a matter of fact. And within a week, somebody contacted him through the website uh, about selling their home. And they told him after you know their initial discussions, they told him that after looking at the content on the site and watching some of the videos and everything that was there, they were really ready to buy from him. Um, they were about 80% sold before they even contacted him just because they uh, had so much trust in his brand from the website. And that, in a nutshell, is why this marketing strategy piece is so important. Because if you get that part right, all the tactics that go along with that will really start working a lot better. And I think that story illustrates that perfectly. Um, so I'll just finish up with uh, three ways that uh, you can learn more about me and what I do, and then we can uh, take some questions if there's any questions. Uh, if you want to learn more about the duct tape marketing system and go through the next six steps in that process, um, the best way to do that is every Wednesday I teach a webinar about duct tape marketing um, that actually is starting in about 20 minutes, coincidentally. Um, it's, just redpointmarketingconsultants.com slash webinar is when that happens every Wednesday. I also have a five-day-a-week uh, video and audio podcast that you can uh, learn more about uh, that website there. And if you want to follow up with some uh, personal advice from me, um, I do offer a free one-hour strategy consultation that I call the Signature Brand Audit, and you can find out more about that um, at that URL on the bottom there. So um, that's all the content that I have for today. Uh, okay, if we have time for some questions, um, I'd be happy to answer those. Awesome. Thanks for that, Kevin. That was great stuff. Um, <clears throat> excuse me, I had to cough for a minute. Um, okay, let's go through some questions here. So the biggest question that I, I'm curious to get your reaction to is this. What is the number one mistake as you sit down with potential clients to start working with them? What is the number one mistake they've made with their marketing strategy? Is it not having a strategy and just start diving into tactics? Is it just sort of shotgunning and hoping something works? Like, What is the biggest mistake you think companies make? Uh, and maybe this depends on the industry the company you're working with, but talk about that just a little bit, Kevin. Uh, well, you hit the nail on the head. The mistake is simply not having one, and that's true regardless of industry. You know, like I said at first, this is the part that's most often skipped. And what I find that most people doing is simply going out and copying what everybody else is doing. So, you know, if it's a, uh, um, let's say, a dentist or a, a electrician or you know whatever type of local service provider, they're going to go out and say, hey, we have the the best quality, we've got the best products, and we've got the best prices. Right, you see that all the time. Best quality, best products, and best prices. Well, well, guess what? It's it's actually impossible for you to have all three of those at the same time, because if I'm willing to accept poor quality or bad customer service, 100% of the time I can get a cheaper price. Right? <laughs> if we're willing to accept bad quality, we can always get a cheaper price. So you can never have all three of those things at the same time. But most businesses, as their marketing strategy pretty much use that, you know, best quality, best service, best price. And uh, 
it, it really, you know, if you actually do have all three of those, um, you're not going to be in business very long because you're basically going to be working for free. Perfect. Yeah, that makes sense. Um, and then, does this depend on industry? I mean, like, do you see certain problems creeping up in the same industries over and over again, or, or really does it just depend on who's running the marketing at that business? Um, well, as far as the individual industries, I guess you, you get into more of the tactical part of it there because um, that'll depend on you know whether it, the marketing is more online or offline. If it's a, a local business, um, obviously it's a very different situation than um, someone like yourselves with a, a national uh, or even international target audience. So those have more to do with the, the tactics and the strategy, but I'd say the the process that I just described works pretty universally in terms of like helping you create a better marketing strategy. And the mistakes that I see um, are also pretty universal when it comes to strategy. That makes a lot of sense. Um, and then finally, the thing that fascinated me with the, your approach with me as the customer of your client was you like you said you really dug down into the actual reasons because like you said I mean everybody serves chips and salsa though I did go to a Mexican restaurant once that made you pay extra which I thought was tacky but anyway um, so you you really need to try to get down to why did they choose you um, how important is that in creating the strategy because it seems to me like there's going to be the reason they chose you that's going to be really critical to developing the whole entire process your marketing strategy and process yeah, the reason they chose you is the most important thing. And what I suggest, if, if you're having trouble um, getting to the bottom of that, ask people to tell you a story about a time that you really made them happy. Or tell them, a, uh, have them tell you a story about um, a time when, or just, you know, any experience that they had working with you that they really enjoyed. And when they start telling the story, these things will start to come out. So if you straight up ask them, you know, what's something that makes us different, or um, you know, why did you choose us? Sometimes they have trouble articulating that. But when they start telling stories, uh, they'll just kind of slip into it, and all of a sudden, in the middle of their story, they'll say something like, "Oh, yeah, yeah, you know, that's that's really why I started working with you. Come to think of it, is is that reason? Um, it's amazing how uh, how quickly those those things come out. And then finally, last question. Um, as you, I guess, tell us a little bit more about Redpoint and how that fits into the duct tape marketing group. Like, talk a little bit about how that, how that whole thing is structured and what it, what it is, because um, we threw a lot of names around today. So just explain how that all interplays with one another. Okay, so Redpoint Marketing Consultants um, is my company. I'm an independent um, marketing consulting, or I have an independent marketing consulting practice. Um, I guess you could kind of think of me as a, uh, you know, if you're using an insurance company, your local insurance guy who sells State Farm insurance. Um, you could kind of think of it that way. You know, I, I am the local provider of the duct tape marketing system. Um, and I have a couple different uh, ways that I do that. I, I work one-on-one -on -one with businesses who want a complete marketing system built for them from the ground up. Um, so we go through every step of the process and they you know, start with a strategy and end up with a complete duct tape style marketing system. For newer businesses or businesses on a, a smaller budget, I have some coaching programs that I offer where they can uh, come to me for advice on an ongoing basis and I can point them in the right direction at each step, but they're actually going out and implementing um, this, the advice that I give them. So they're in charge of getting it done. I'm just kind of guiding them through the process. Great. Makes a lot of sense. Kevin, thanks for taking the time today, sir. We appreciate it. It was great stuff. Thanks for answering some questions. And, uh, yeah, you, uh, you did a wonderful, wonderful job. So thanks for taking the time. Everybody, thanks you for joining us as well. Um, make sure you come to our webinar tomorrow with Travis Blithen, the CEO of Stellar SEO. 
and uh, you'll learn about link building, uh, whether it's good, whether it's bad, and what the future holds for it. So any final thoughts before we conclude, Kevin? Uh, nope. Just uh, once again, thanks for having me, and uh, I had a lot of fun. Awesome. Thank you very much. Have a wonderful day, everybody, and uh, watch for an email from us tomorrow that has the recording attached to it. So thanks again. Bye-bye.